Hi guys, it's Melissa again. How are you guys today? I hope everybody is doing well. I'm going to work on a block today that didn't come out of a quilt builder card box. I am making a sunbonnet sue and I've already got all of my blocks cut for the quilt I want to make. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this one using heat and bond light. Uh, but the next thing I'm going to do after I get this one put together for you guys is I'm going to try to get this pattern into my brother's scan and cut so that I can cut them out using that. And then I want to use my embrilliance, cross your fingers, to go ahead and embroider all of these. So I've already tried to record this once and the video didn't come out. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how I did this. So I cut off a piece of my heat and bond, and you should be aware that my sunbonnet sue faces left here. But since I didn't trace my pattern over onto the other side of the paper, this sunbonnet sue is actually going to be flipped and will face right. And all you do with the heat and bond is you go through here and you trace your pattern pieces onto the heat and bond. And I'm just going to do this real fast. So there's the bonnet. And even though the pattern, <clears throat> even though the pattern has overlaps on it, you want to trace your pieces so that they don't overlap on the heat and bond because you want to be able to cut out that entire piece. So there's my dress. And then I'm going to cut out the apron. And in the interest of, of saving heat and bond, because it's expensive, I'm going to go ahead and cut the apron out of the inside of the dress. So when I actually cut this out, I will cut out the dress part and then I will snip inside and cut out the apron part. And down here, my foot will fit in this little corner. I'm going to go ahead and draw my foot and I'm going to, I'm making dashed lines. I'll still cut them out completely, but those dashed lines tell me that that gets tucked up underneath another piece of fabric. Here's my sleeve. And I have a whole huge box of heat and bond, but I want to use the, I want to use as little heat and bond as possible actually, because the stuff isn't cheap. And there's one hand and there's the other hand. And I'm not worrying about if I get a little bit off of the line. So in just slightly more heat and bond than the size of the pattern, I've traced that out. And then what I'll do is I'll cut each of my pieces out. And if you need to, you can label these. Bonnet, apron, dress, foot, uh, sleeve. And then I've got a back hand and a front hand. I could label them right and left, but back and front work better for me. So now I'll cut that out and then I will go ahead and apply it to fabric. And if I can pick up the right piece of fabric here. I have already applied my heat and bond to my fabrics. So that's on there. I've ironed it on. Here's the fabric for my dress. And I didn't cut the apron out of the dress on the first round. But I thought, you know, that, that was a waste of a lot of heat and bond. Now I know that this is my foot. So let me grab my scissors over here. And I'm going to 
Just cut out around my foot. And I want to be fairly close. The pattern, which is linked in the description box, actually tells you to cut a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch around each of these pieces. I am not doing that because I'm not doing needle turn on this. If you want to do needle turn applique, one, you wouldn't use the um, heat and bond, and you would cut your seam allowance that you wanted underneath there. And you would just turn it under and sew it down with a hand basting stitch. Um, I don't hand sew. Arthur has other ideas whenever I start talking about hand sewing as an arthritis. So no, Melissa doesn't hand sew. All right. And here you can see why I thought, you know, you could just cut that out of the center of that. Out of the heat and bond, not out of the fabric. So you would cut your heat and bond apart before you applied it to your fabric. And each version of heat and bond, stitch witchery, whatever you use, has instructions on the package or how to apply it. And I'm just moving my scraps over to the left. That's not where they're going to stay. I'm just moving them. And then I'm going to do a little cutting around my heat and bond. So that I don't accidentally end up with scraps in my scrap bin that have heat and bond applied to them. Those never work out well for me in the scrap bin. So here's my bonnet. Cut it out real quick. And a sun bonnet suit quilt is a project that you can do over time. You can make scrap blocks. You know, if you wanted to make some bonnet suit, you could make the decision to make one scrap block a week for whatever length of time, and then use that as um, a repository for all of your scraps that you get out of your quilting and other sewing. I'm using a layer cake that I have that I unearthed somewhere in my sewing room. I don't know what line it is, what fabric line. I just know that I thought it would be really pretty in a sunbonnet suit quilt. If you really want it to be efficient, you could use cardboard to create yourself templates for this, especially if you wanted to do it with um, scraps over the course of time. And then you could just have your templates sitting close to your sewing machine and pull everything out. Now, I'm going to set my piece of fabric down here. And I've got roughly, I'll show you how I do it. I've got a rough cross grid in there, so I know where the center of the block is. I'll press that back down with my hand. It was ironed in before I started this little project today. And this is a piece of sheet. It doesn't really have a right or a wrong side. One side looks a little bit smoother to me, so I'm going to use that side here. And then I'm going to bring my pattern back over with all of my pieces. And I'm going to start laying things down. Now for this one, the first thing I want to lay down is the skirt. And I'm not ironing, I'm just laying them out. So I want my skirt there my apron, and remember, this comes out in reverse because it's heat and bond. Kind of trying to line it up to 
the same way it is on my pattern, except the other direction. That's nicely worth it, my foot rule. There it is. I'm not sure if she just has really big feet or what the deal is. My tweezers to move that a little bit. Uh -huh. If you have a hard time feeling this stuff, you can use a pen. You usually don't have a hard time with it. The hand one. I have to rethink having the sleeve match the apron. I make sure I've had it match the dress. So there's one hand on. Now do you see why I didn't start ironing anything down? You can turn your bonnet any way you want to turn it. I'm going to do mine right like that. I'm looking at it, making sure everything is where I want it. Then we're going to set the iron down. And I'm not going to move it, except to pick it up and move it over a little bit. I am not going to wiggle the iron back and forth. I want everything to glue down and stay where it's supposed to stay. A lot like doing the chicken salad, in my opinion. You guys watched the chicken salad so long that I did last year. I just happened to really want to do Sunbonnet Sue's. And I want to do them using the scan and cut and the flourish, etc. But that's going to take a little bit of time to finish. And I wanted to show you guys how to make an easy sunbonnet suit up front. Now, one other thing I want to toss out there for you. One of the nice things about heat and bond is that you have the exact shape cut out here. You could use these for templates to draw your next heat and bond if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that, but you could also use these by putting them on top of cardboard and drawing around to make cardboard templates. So don't just automatically assume, oh, let's throw everything away now that we're done. Okay, and now we're going to move you a little bit more. And I'm going to bring you over here to the sewing machine and show you stitching this all down. So give me just a second to get the all, that all set up and we'll be right back. Okay, so when you're doing embroidery, you want to do when you're doing embroidery, you want to do the farthest back pieces first. So for me, that's going to be the first hand and the apron. So I'm going to do the stitching here, 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 and across, and I'll do that hand. Then I'll come up and do this hand and then the sleeve. So let's not talk about it. Let's just do it. I'm trying to do short and narrow stitch widths here so that 
everything gets sewn down. And because this is just such a short distance, I'm just going to jump here, line up, you can put stabilizer under this, but I'm not going for a satin stitch. <laughs> This may be my test block and may never find its way into my quilt. So. Because hopefully my other blocks will look more professional. Set my threads here. Boy, some days I just can't see. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to do that little hand. When you're doing curves, if you need to stop, you need to pay attention to where you're at. If you're on the outside going around, you need to make sure you're on the outside of that curve when you stop so that your stitch doesn't get jagged. I'm not tying off ends because most of the, or back stitching, because most of these are going to actually get sewn over by something else. I am, however, going to go ahead and cut that little junk stitch right there on the front and the back before I sew that sleeve because it's the next thing in order here. And I'm going to start with giving myself some more thread because I don't want that to pull out. Start right there at the wrist. That. Where that wrist turns, I'm going to the outside because it's an outside curve. And then I'm going to sew right on around the sleeve. Turn, so I stopped on the outside. Side. Again. And then pull it free. Better. And I started and stopped in basically the same place. So I have beginning threads and ending threads there, so I need to stitch both. Then I need to go down here and do the foot before I do the outside of the dress. And the bonnet is actually going to be the last thing I do. Because of all the pieces, the bonnet is the very top. We've got the foot sewn on. We're still doing good. So we've got the foot sewn on. Now we're going to do the dress. And I'm going to start right up here at the edge of the bonnet. I'm going to see if I can get that stitch length shorter because I kind of want this one to look a little more satiny. And you'll notice I'm sewing over both the edge of the apron and the edge of the dress. They should have actually been lined up together. Oh well. Sometimes you win and sometimes you don't. Put that thread out. Trying to get you guys a little closer here. And then I'm turning. 
this is a curved edge, so I'm just going to feed it through. forward one, even though it's a little bit off the edge, because I want to make sure I'm going in and taking this edge. With the heat and bond, this is actually a little bit stabilized. Okay, so now I've sewn all the way around the edge of my dress. Red there, but I don't know where it came from. Get it off there. And I'm not going to break thread. I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing around my bonnet. So right here, where we kind of start that inside curve. I'm going to stop on the inside, tilt a little, and then keep sewing. I want to go back one, and then sew around this edge. want to use my embroidery machine to do these. It'll give me a prettier satin stitch. And I can one more. I can um, vary the threads. I could use a variegated thread, a rainbow thread, a purple, a pink, a green, whatever I wanted to use. Okay, and I did sew over one or two stitches there. But that is our basic sunbonnet too. And I'm going to do the apron in a different color next time. I'll probably do the aprons in white rather than in the same color as the dress. Um, but this is my next project is doing sunbonnet sues in a big quilt. And you can dress these up. Let me bring you up here so you can see me. So I think everybody at some point has made a sunbonnet suit pattern or made a quilt from sunbonnet suit. Even my mom, who barely sewed, made a sunbonnet suit quilt. She made hers with um, umbrellas and they had bows on them and little fancy shoes. They weren't this big clunky thing. I'm more of a peasant kind of girl, so I thought, yeah, this is what I want. But I looked at, and I'm going to grab up here, a bunch of different sunbonnet suit patterns. This is the one I ended up with because it fits the block that I'm using to make this, which is a 10 and a half inch block. But we had mentioned this a few weeks back. This is the sun slaughtering sunbonnet Sioux basic pattern. And I know I downloaded it for free online. I don't remember where I found it at. I will try to put the link in the description box if I find it. But slaughtering sunbonnet Sioux is kind of a goth or, or emo or fans of Halloween genre. Um, they do everything under the sun, from hanging her to showing her on fire. It's really interesting, not necessarily my aesthetic, but it's creative, and it definitely is something new and different. So, you know, think about it. I probably will dress mine up with sweeter stuff than that. Maybe I'll put buttons on it or hearts or have one of them holding flowers or a baby, whatever strikes my fancy whenever I'm putting all the blocks together at the very end. But I wanted to show you guys how to make a basic sunbonnet suit block with the heat and bond 
You can also do it with freezer paper. You can cut them out slightly bigger and do them as hand applique. Um, and sunbonnet sues are just a classic quilt. So I, I think everybody should probably have one. Now, um, next week we'll be back to the Quilt Builder card box. I am pre-recording this to give myself a couple of days of no camera time so that I can work on getting this into the scan and cut and into a brilliance and hopefully get the flourish to do all that sewing for me. Because sitting there and doing that little itty bitty sewing is a little tough on the shoulder. So I'm trying to find some ways to accommodate my disability. And I figure a sunbonnet suit was a simple, easy block to make. Once I figure that out, then maybe I can move on to more complicated stuff. So I hope that the mods have put everybody in. I want to give a shout out to all of my mods. Thank you so much for being here. Even though this is a premiere and not a regular live. Um, thank you for putting in the links and for putting in everybody's information and answering questions. I know you guys all bust butt to do that. Um, as of today, Sylvia is at 804. Colleen is over um, 1,070. Hopefully, by the time this airs on Thursday, she'll be over 1,100, and Sylvia will be over 1,000. I've got my fingers crossed for both of you. And I want to give a shout out to everybody. Thank you very much for being here. And I'm going to put this in here at the end. Guess who, Nancy? Hello, Nancy, guess. Um, always tells me, oh, I missed your live. Nancy, don't worry about it. Team replay is great. I appreciate it. And um, I love that you show up when we're live and you engage in the chat, and that's great. But if you miss it because you've got a real life going, that's okay. That's okay. I'm perfectly fine to answer questions in the comments for you. All right, you guys all have a great day. If somebody's close enough to criticize your work, tell them to go home. They don't need to be doing that stuff. Bye, guys. Love y'all.